There's three of us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I make a motion for the December 9th, 2015 minutes. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next, I'd like to acknowledge the camera crew and just remind everybody that this is being recorded. And also thank Mrs. Johnson for taking care of our minutes. And then we'll move to the highlight on schools, uh, the volunteer of the year, and the retiree recognition. And I'm going to do this from up here, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. uh, hello, everybody. Welcome. Usually at this time during the meetings, every month we recognize students who have made contributions to the school and students who have excelled in their work. And tonight's a special night for us because we recognize people from the community and teachers from within and staff members from within our own organization who have contributed in some way, shape, or form. So I'd like to award three kinds of plaques tonight. Some are for volunteers of the year, some are for community contributors, and uh, a third set is for our retirees. So please indulge me. The first award goes to Tammy and Paul Bork. I know Tammy's not here, but you want to come on up. Tammy and, yeah. <laughs> Let me just say a few things about them. These were, uh, you were nominated for this, uh, this award, and this is what the folks who nominated you said. Tammy and Paul Bork have been longtime volunteers in the Worcester Public Schools. The main thing about Paul and Tammy is that, w that when you get one, you get the other. Two for the price of one. From the book fair at Major Edwards, to special presentations in classrooms, to serving on the middle high school PTA, to helping with the plant sale and many other events, you can always count on them to lend a helping hand. Most recently, their passionate commitment to the middle school play has brought new life back to an activity that drew the interest of only 15 students just two years ago to over 50 this year in what was the most successful play ever based on ticket sales. The Wizard of Oz, which was held in May of this year. Their many nights at the school running rehearsals, coupled with their countless hours at home building sets and communicating with parents, created a top level performance that all involved could be proud of. And there, I have to say, there were people at that play from all over Worcester County. It was just amazing. Congratulations, Paul and Tammy, for a job well done. Paul and Tammy, the West Boylston Public Schools, thanks you for the wonderful work that you do and award you with a 2017 Volunteer of the Year Award. Jeff and Lucilla Downer. Jeff and Lucilla, while they're on their way up, I'll speak about them. They have a generous spirit that the West Boyl they have a generous spirit that has helped the West Boylston Public Schools, its students and parents benefit in many ways that they may not even be aware of. You want to come? You can stand here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you don't want to do that. Okay. <laughs> she knows the game. Uh, Lucilla has served on the PTA at Major Edwards for several years and is responsible for the many, many of the donated items for the end of the year event in June. She works hard beginning in January contacting companies for donations and secures many items that help to make the event a huge success. She is also the resident town photographer for many school and sporting events. She donates her time to take photos at the father-daughter dance, the school plays, and most town sporting events. Her images allow parents to have treasured memories that are an important part of their children's lives. Jeff is always willing to help with any project, including the donation of materials and help with the building of the Wizard of Oz sets. Beyond the schools, he has generously sponsored numerous town sports teams. This duo quietly gives time and energy to many of our students with extreme generosity and always with a smile. We are grateful for their contributions to the school district. Jeff and Lucilla, the West Boylston Public Schools, thank you for sharing your talent with us and award you with a 2017 Volunteer of the Year Award. I don't care, so I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank
Uh, we now want to honor some community contributors. This year, under the leadership of the Middle High School Administration, we were able to support a group of students to go to Haiti to give service to the Be Like Brit organization. In typical West Boylston fashion, many community business leaders stepped up with enormous support for our students, and we would like to recognize three local businesses for their contributions tonight by awarding them our 2017 Community Contributors Award. The first award is to Tony Topi of the Mill Restaurant. He's not here with us tonight. But we'd also like to recognize Jeff Cranston from Cranston Auto Body and Paige Stover from Darby's Bakery. Thank you. Some other honored guests tonight are retirees. This evening, we recognize Janice Foster. Come on up. We recognize Janice for 22 years of service to the West Boylston Public Schools as a member of our cafeteria staff. Janice's dedication to her work in this district has been truly extraordinary, having missed only a handful of days during her entire history of work with the district. Janice, we are grateful for the service you've given us in providing delicious and nutritious meals for all to enjoy. And so I present you with this plaque, which reads, for many years, to Janice Foster for many years of exceptional service in the West Boylston Public Schools on the occasion of your retirement, June 2017. We also recognize Sandra Young. Come on up. Sandra has given 25 years of dedicated service to the West Boylston Public Schools. As a cook in our cafeteria, Sandra has lent her considerable talents to preparing delicious and nutritious meals for all of us, most especially the beloved chicken bowl. Sandy, we are grateful for your great service to our schools, and I would like to present you with this plaque, which, which reads, Honoree is not. Oh, yes, she is. She's here. Okay. Um, Judy Van Hoven. I know that. That's good. Tonight, we also recognize Judy Van Hoven for her 20 years of exceptional service in the special education department. Judy is a highly skilled employee, a very visible presence of support for special education students, and she is kind beyond measure. <laughs> From helping our students as they care for the gardens outside our front doors to managing our school recycling program, Judy is front and center and always with a smile and a kind word. We are all going to miss a tru this truly lovely colleague as she retires. Judy, your plaque reads, to Judith Van Hoven for many years of service in the West Boylston Public Schools on the occasion of your retirement, June Uh, Lee Ann Hanlon. Congratulations, dear. We'll see you around. <laughs> this is like Batman and Robin here coming up. <laughs> Lee Ann Hanlon has been a special education teacher in the West Boylston schools for 21 years. Mm -hmm. In those 21 years, she has served the needs of special education students as their teacher with distinction and poise. Lee Ann is a teacher we could always count on to make sure that she was filling students' days with meaningful work and with a joyful spirit. Leanne leaves large shoes to fill in our special education department and we will truly miss her spirit of collegiality and hospitality that she extended to all who were fortunate enough to spend time with her in her classroom. Leanne, to Leanne Hanlon for many years of exceptional service in the West Boylston Public Schools on the occasion of your retirement, June 2017. Thank you. And last, but absolutely not least, Pat Tranter. Yeah, 
Congratulations, dear. Pat Tranter has taught mathematics at West Boylston at the high school level for 16 years. As a well-respected member of the math department, <coughs> Pat has extended her professional expertise to maintain an, evol an involvement with the Massachusetts Department of Education as a consulting teacher in the development and scoring of the math ma mathematics MCAS test. Pat has been a team player, available and skilled in teaching a variety of mathematics classes depending on the needs of the school and the needs of the students. She has also served several times as the program coordinator for the math department during many school years. Pat, for many years of exceptional teaching in the West Boylston Public Schools, I present this plaque to you on the occasion of your retirement, June 2017. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I just want to um, thank I, I, our parent volunteers. I know when we read some things about you folks that just begins to scratch the surface. Um, I know many of you personally have um, volunteered with you, so I know that what we said tonight doesn't even cover the things that you guys do. To our community contributors, um, from the West Boylston Athletic Association and all kinds of other events that have run, uh, Jeff and Kathy, um, thank you so much for all that you've done for the schools. Uh, Paige, I know that Darby's is always generous mm -hmm. with donations to everything that goes on up here, um, from desserts at the dances to uh, desserts for the dessert auction that helped get the kids to Haiti. Um, and I know that Tony from the mill is always generous with food and supporting the West Boylston Athletic Association events and PTA meetings. Um, and without you guys in the community, the kids in this school district would not be able to do the things that they've done this year. So that is just a tremendous show of support um, from community members, and I thank you for that. To our teachers here tonight, um, I don't know, we had five of you, we're talking like 100 years of service to the West Boylston Public Schools. Um, you're all going to be missed next year. Um, I know that many of you I, I have not had day-to-day -day interactions with, um, but I know I've met all of you, and, and I know that you are going to have big, they're going to have big shoes to fill next year. Um, Sandy, I don't know what they're going to do without you over there, um, but, you know, I just want to let you all know that we truly appreciate your service to the district, and thank you for coming tonight, and we're so glad that we were able to say thank you and uh, hope and wish you well in your retirement. So thank you so much for coming. You're welcome. <laughs> um, okay, at this time uh, we'll open up to any community input. Thank you all. Thank you guys. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you so much. Uh, now we have a couple warrants to approve. Uh, first are the approval for the payables warrants dated May 30th and June 12th and June 19th, 2017. Are you motion? I'll make a motion to approve the payables warrant dated warrants dated May 30th, 2017, June 12th, 2017, and June 19th, 2017. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, then the payroll warrants dated May 19th, June 2nd, and June 16th, 2017. Make a motion to approve the payroll warrants dated May 19th, 2017, June 2nd, 2017, and June 16th, 2017. Okay, second. And no second. second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, 
Roger, were there? I only signed one. I didn't only saw one. There was only one, one that needed. A, <coughs> excuse me. There was only one that needed a signature. The others that were was signed by you guys. If you want to sign them again, you can. On oh, okay. It, on that end of it, they right. should be over there. The okay. last one is the one that the current just this week's payroll. So. All right. And just out of curiosity, um, with this being the last regular meeting, how are we going to handle the approval through the summer? I mean, obviously I'll sign them or whatever. What's up? We do one in August. Okay. Right. We can do them all in August. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to uh, subcommittee reports and we'll start with policy subcommittee. Uh, so this is a vote to approve the second reading of policies D, E, and F. I got a motion for that. I make a motion to uh, approve the readings of the policies D, E, and F. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Next is on the ad hoc transportation um, vote to approve production and bus fees. So, the uh, Rick and I met with uh, the superintendent to discuss the bus fees, um, and the plan we came up with was uh, what we believe to be a revenue neutral si situation. Although, the idea is to uh, alleviate some of the last minute crunch, people um, submitting their their. Um, you know, bus fees late. So the idea is uh, what we're uh, asking the committee uh, to do tonight is to reduce the bus fees for um, on-time uh, applications to $175 and um, to increase the, um, the bus fees to $225 uh, as of what, August 1st? August 1st. Um, so we believe that would be revenue neutral. Hopefully that will incent folks to get their um, bus applications in on time. So I'd like to make a, a motion to approve uh, that structure and reduction of our bus fees. Take a second. I'll second that. Uh, any? The only, uh -huh. the only yeah. discussion I would have is that the budget subcommittee also met on this and reviewed it and also agreed to the concept of what we're trying to accomplish. Absolutely. So I just wanted to bring that up as well. And then the other one other comment that came out of that meeting that would be addressed in the letter was um, there's a, two options to pay, either mail-in or online. Uh, online is obviously easy to track, but uh, payment that would come in postmarked by August 1st would be eligible for the 175, but postmarked after would be 225. Mm -hmm. The other, um, so let's make it Can crystal. We, let's make it crystal yeah. clear to the community, is that we are reducing a fee. Yep. This is a positive thing. We are reducing a fee to 175 from 200 dollars. We're going in the right direction, I, I believe, uh, as a committee. <coughs> With a family uh, cap of 350. And a family cap of 350. <laughs> so this is a positive thing for the community. The question I, I raised to the superintendent is if, if, if someone comes in and it's August 2nd and they say, oh, I, I missed it by a, a day, can I get the cheaper fee? What's, well, how do we handle that? Well, if you're, if you're, the policy you set tonight is this one that has a fee structure where it's $175 if paid before August 1st or on August 1st and it's, it's 225 after, it would be 225 after. Okay. Just want to confirm that to the community because I think it's important them, for them to know that we mean we really truly mean this because it's so critical to the processing of mm -hmm. the bus schedule. That's where the issue is is the processing of the bus schedule. So we need to make sure that people understand that that they need to get there. It, it's a pretty significant penalty to miss that to miss that number. So. Uh, uh, that's all I'm sharing with the community is that we really want them to, to get it in early. And that's it. Thank you. Any other discussion? Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. 
Can I just, outside of the financial piece of the bus thing, <coughs> do we also want to discuss the fact that if folks don't get it in, there may yeah. be? Yeah. Well, there is, a, there is a provision on the information that goes out to families. By the way, we're going to try to send that information several times. Beginning right after this meeting, we're going to put together the notices that are going to go home in backpacks. We're also going to mail notices home, and we're going to, uh, you know, blast people with emails through the summer to remind them of this August 1st deadline. Because the, Mrs. Breen is right, there are actually two consequences. One is the late fee that you'll have to pay if your fee is paid after August 1st. The second is your, your child's bus stop may not be the most convenient one because you'll be put into where the other bus stops are already slated for unless we can make an easy adjustment but that's going to be um, our second our second go-to we're going to try to just put kids into bus stops that already exist so I would say that there it's better if you get it in on time um, because otherwise it just makes it difficult to schedule uh, the the we don't we do have kids who ride the bus for free and reduced lunch in order to be scheduled properly for the right bus stop their forms need to be in by august 1st as well that, so that deadline affects them in that way that their forms have to be in in order for the bus to be scheduled to their for their most convenient bus stop is that pretty clear that it, it is clear and it, it needs to be clear that this is being done because we were receiving bus fee applications into september last year uh, probably well into the first and almost second week of September and um, when that happens the office is continually updating and changing bus routes um, and continually have to process things with the bus company and it was an extremely disruptive um, way for them to have to conduct themselves in the main office to continually spend hours on bus routes and bus schedules so Parents need to know that this needs to be done by August 1st or there will be a financial um, piece of it that's not beneficial and there will be a piece of it where your child may not have a stop that's as convenient as you'd like. The, the main thing here though folks is that if you do what you need to do, get it in on time, it's actually going to cost you less. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what we're really hoping here is that the majority of folks are paying, take advantage of, take advantage of that and paying less for, their, for the bus fee. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the consequence of that will be uh, a lot more happy families and we'll have happy office. Well, uh, happy office and, you know, a more efficient bus schedule. So it's a win-win. Win-win. Win-win-win. We're all set. We're all set. Okay. Um, now we'll move on to the appointment you of representative. Need to vote. Oh, well, the black, right. No, you need no, to vote we, the bus. We did. We did. Oh, you did? Yes, we did. did. And we started the conversation oh, about the Which is another after Thank you. Uh, appointment of a representative to the flat uh, board of directors mm -hmm. for FY18. The FLAC uh, board, as you know, the district is a member of the FLAC organization. And because of our membership, we are required to appoint a representative to the board of directors for every fiscal year. It can be a member of the school committee or a member of the, or, or the superintendent. I guess that's the only option. So I, <laughs> I'm, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> I tried. Congratulations. <laughs> Uh, I do need a motion and a vote Someone for that. Too. Motion, so if you want one, we'll I will make that motion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so appoint Dr. Shah. Dr. Shah for, for our representative uh, of the flag. I'll second it. I'll second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much. And I would make one other note: the copy of the approved flag agreement is in your packets, just for reference. Move on to communication reports. We'll start with Mr. Maha. I'd like to thank the West Boylston Police Department and especially Officer Dugan for their assistance. Yesterday, uh, we conducted our uh, Alice drill yesterday morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, they provided some feedback and areas of improvement that we need to work on next year as uh, we exit the building. They did try to um, trick things up with the delay of the information uh, so just to see the, the rhythm of the building and so there's some things that we need to adjust next year but all in all it went very well field trip season we've had uh, grade three went to the fruitlands on a very rainy day grade four low, low mills grade five went to the state house the art club went to do the quarter museum and all uh, activities went very well um, i would say i'd like to congratulate the fifth grade on their trip to the state house that was a problem-free day 
for them. And I'd also like to um, have had their uh, farewell cookout today over at the Summer House. And uh, as a whole, I, I couldn't be more pleased with the maturity that this group has really demonstrated over the last few months. I was, uh, you, you like to see a gradual improvement with a group when they begin in September. There are always areas of concern and, you know, we hope some maturity builds and uh, it did. All, all of the uh, activities grade five participated in this year, whether it was the Wax Museum project, the trip to Plymouth, uh, they behaved very well and conducted themselves uh, appropriately and represented the community uh, respectfully. So uh, as I told Mr. Fornia this morning, uh, was, yes, yeah, it was this morning, that uh, he's getting a pretty good group next year. Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. T for uh, his efforts coordinating field day last Friday, uh, which we ran in conjunction with the uh, fun run, which was a successful event on Friday. Uh, they, they are close to raising their, their goal. There will be um, a meeting coming up in the next week to see how the, uh, the funds have arrived. Uh, you know, the, the fun run on Friday was a well-run, well-organized event. It was enjoyed by students and staff. I would add that the week-long build-up to it, I, I think we would assess again uh, if we're going to continue with a similar program next year but the, the actual event was a success and I believe that's it thank you thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Fornio yes Scott good evening I'd like to uh, thank <coughs> my colleague Ms. Maha for uh, coordinating the fifth grade move up days that we've experienced in the past couple weeks we've had each of the fifth grade rising sixth graders all over the visit uh, we've had lunch lunch visits and tours and uh, it's a very nice group and we're very excited to, uh, to get to work with them uh, in the fall. Um, we had, uh, last week we finished up all of our MCAS testing uh, at the high school level, grade 9 MCAS uh, for physics uh, and science, technology, and engineering. Uh, our grade 11 students took their SATs this past weekend as well. Um, our 8th grade uh, returned from their end of year trip to New York City uh, where they saw lots of uh, wonderful museums. Uh, they got to see a Broadway show. Uh, they got to visit the Memorial for 9-11, uh, go to Ellis Island. Uh, the kids uh, spoke very highly of the experience and were very excited uh, to come back and share that with uh, the community with the parents. I wanted to publicly thank uh, Kim Olario and Sally Johnson for coordinating uh, graduation exercises uh, which were very successful. And uh, two staff members, uh, Cindy Foley and Leslie Garrison, who were the advisors for the senior week and senior class events, planned everything from the trip to the baccalaureate mass, the senior breakfast, etc. Uh, and Mr. Wiley and Mr. Goodwill did all the cooking for the students, uh, which was very nice. Um, I'd also like to thank Justin T. and Hara for his excellent work as our athletic director this year. Um, which culminated in an awards night on Monday that the WBAA co-sponsored for awards for all of our athletic participants. Um, we're excited on Friday to give out academic awards to students in grades uh, 6 and 7 and 9, 10, and 11. And we have a special awards uh, move-up celebration on Monday for grade 8 which represents the move up day uh, in which uh, your vice chair, Mr. Morrison, will give the opening address. He'll be moving. <laughs> very excited to have him. Uh, finally, I'd like to thank uh, the members of the PDIS, which is Positive Behavior uh, Incentive uh, Program here at the Middle High School for all the hard work they did with our professional development this year and uh, helping to elevate our school culture, and promote participation, leadership, cooperation, and good citizenship. Um, this was a very successful year with this program, and we hope to continue uh, to uh, have this program take a positive effect uh, on all of the grades here in the high school. Um, I'd like to thank Dr. Schaub for her support of the hiring process for this school. Uh, we have interviewed and done practice teaching <coughs> Uh, demo lessons uh, for six positions uh, since April. Uh, middle school science, high school chemistry, uh, high school special education uh, through uh, Ms. Training's assistance. Um, 
Middle High School Music, High School Math, and Grade 6 English. Uh, the process of conducting interviews with committees and having folks in to teach so that we can evaluate them and see them in action uh, is, is labor intensive, but uh, we feel produces the best results and we're very excited to bring these new members of the staff uh, on board for the start of the 2017-18 school year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to uh, Sister Annie. Do you have any report? Do you want to give up all your time to Mr. Pontreon? He asked if he could have my time today, <laughs> actually, this morning. He said, you have nothing to say, right? Can I have that? Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Wasn't that the conversation? Oh, no, that was you. That no, wasn't me. I did that. Okay. It wasn't me. I wasn't yeah. with you this morning. He wanted my time. Oh, no, I just Mr. Say, Forney you took all your time, I so know, you're right? done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, just I, I just like to say um, at this time, I'd just like to thank all the staff. Um, you know, who's worked, not only just the special ed staff, all the staff in general that really work tirelessly and uh, they really give a lot to the students here in West Boyles. And, and I, I would have to say, you know, with, with a few bumps in the roads, you know, for, for whatever reasons, we've had a really successful year, um, especially with that, I feel it within the special education department, but in the school overall, I think it's been a, a great, a great year. So I'm going to say thank you to, my, to the staff. Well, that's great. All right, uh, Mr. Park Do you want some of my time, or are you all done? Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, a couple, of, just a couple of items I have. So, we should have an expenditure report for the month of May. As you can see by the availability year to date on uh, that expenditure report, we're in good financial position right now. Um, we're finalizing all our couple last couple of warrants as we speak to process. Is any questions on the financial? I would. Uh, the only question I have, if you know, through the mm -hmm. chair, um, and, it, and it may it may lean towards the superintendent or the principal, uh, the substitute level was significant, 131 percent, which mm -hmm. I don't yeah, know so what. Yeah, so you, can, you can never predict how many how people are going to be out or who you're going to have to cover for. Does that mean that we've had a lot of um, teachers out? I think we sometimes budget pretty low for it. We also use substitutes a lot for professional development, so those are all included in there, and that would be not people out, but people doing extra work that's but for I the would district. But that that's all budgeted because we know the professional um, development situation. Yes and no. Uh, this year we did end up at the end of the year doing some significant professional development with some special education teachers that we did we covered for a lot of them, but. Um, we just had money left in a grant that we wanted to use, so we did we did some PD for them, and we did cover. So I, you know, that's a funny account. We don't always budget it very high. Right. Also, too, we've had a couple of maternity leaves, which are a big, yeah, a, a big terms. factor of that. And then we've had one long-term sickness and maybe a couple another. of those. So these yeah, some of these were one. there's two maternity these weren't predicted in, in the beginning of the year. <laughs> Well, we don't, we don't budget more for, yeah, yeah, we don't budget more for maternity leaves. We just budget the regular yeah, amount. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But it gets so. to substitutes, of course, because you have to bring in a sub for that. And they're long-term subs, too, so it's at a higher rate. So that's that hits that account mm -hmm. pretty heavy when you have not one but two of them yeah. on that end of it. So, so to, to Rick's point, how, uh, how has this year borne out versus, say, previous years on that line item? Or we can get you a report on that. I would yeah. rather I would rather not hypothesize. I'd rather no, get no, you a report on it. But I think it'd be interesting because yeah. that comes that comes into play. Part of the reason why we do that other report right. about exactly that's the last many, report yeah. that she does. How many days? Yeah. Yeah. How many days exactly. out? It, it, it seems like a thirty-one percent increase is a significant increase in my eyes. Yeah. If it was up ten percent, I understand. Right. Yeah. Thirty-one is a big number, yeah. in my eyes. But okay. now on the second hand. 17, that special ed department really did a great job this year, and, I, and we usually are, 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 are usually right after you. But <laughs> <laughs> but that was <laughs> we had a good year this year. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, yeah, let's Very see. Good. Yeah, let's just keep that yeah. quiet. We <laughs> 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 don't jinx ourselves. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any other questions on this? Any other? Mm -hmm. um, then we have a line item for a vote to approve a bid for. We have a. Yes, exactly. <laughs> we have a vote for um, two 14 passenger school vehicles to be used, okay. 
as you see in the memo, okay, the front page of the memo, okay, um, attached you find the 14 passenger school bus bid documents from a bid opening on May 30th, 2017. After review of the bid documents, it's the administration's recommendation to award the 14 passenger school bus bid to DACO bus sales and the 14 passenger multifunction activity bus to Alliance bus groups. Those are two different vehicles, which I'll explain in a second. The bid prices were 53490 and 53495 $5 difference between them, um, <laughs> respectively, okay? Uh, funding for these will come from either the school choice, revolving transportation account, and or the general fund account. We need, two, we need two different types of vehicles because of our program that we have over in Lemonster, our vocational, the CT program that's over there. You have to use a school bus, a minibus. Okay, it's a minibus. It's a yellow bus, has all the lights, the arms, everything, okay? That has to be used because it's a scheduled day-to-day -day activity where we're transporting students. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit different on the license end of it, which on our end, we will go into that with the drivers that we get for that. They have to have, it's not just a regular 7D license, it's another um, endorsement off a 7D license, which is called the S endorsement for school bus. We will, we will handle that on our end of it. The other bus is the white bus, okay, that we would like to award. That's the multifunctional bus. It's like an activity bus. You see them all around. You see the Council on Aging has them. Uh, churches have them. If it's 14 passengers, we will use that for activities for that we use in our vans for now on a pretty good basis. The vans go out quite a bit to, to different things, but we can use that. That is no special licensing required. That that does not have school pupil plates on it. It's just a regular uh, vehicle out there. It can be used for an athletic trip to the tennis team, golf team, whatever on it, or used to take a group of kids to uh, you know any function that, that Mr. Fornia has that he was asking about to transport the Lion Scholar kids on this or that uh, during the day. So so those are the two vehicles we would like to bring on into our fleet of vehicles that we have, our three, our three other um, uh, Dodge minivans, a 7D license ones. That's, um, that's up to you to vote that. If you vote that, then we will pursue that and go further with it. We will give you a cost breakout of our current fleet that we're running. We, I think we uh, at the budget finance committee, committee yeah, meeting that we had, we set out our August retreat. We will do the whole yep. financial situation on it. We save money. Mr. Trainer can attest to that. The three one three vehicles that we're running out there for our special ed routes, um, we save money definitely on it. <coughs> um, we would like to pursue it a little further. Um, to you know, keep the cost down, and, and that we're doing that every which way we can. This will be one of the ways, especially the, the, the route that we have going to Lemonster every day, our vocational kids. We looked at it from short term and long term, because short term I could get away right now because of the numbers that we have by transporting those kids on a 7D vehicle, but it wouldn't handle us year two, year three down the road. Long, we're looking at long term on it to go with a bigger vehicle uh, in that eventually if that program gets up there we may have to go to a regular bus in that once we get out of this market but then that's a whole different story we can bid that out and go from there but right now we can we feel we can handle this for a couple of years anyways <coughs> on, at, a, at a substantial cost savings we're estimating right now that's um, so we're buying one of each Great. We're buying two vehicles, one of each. One school bus, yep. mini bus, let's yep. put it that way, mini school bus, and one activity bus. So question, we're only buying one mini school bus. Correct. Something happens where that vehicle's out of commission <coughs> for the day. Yep. What is our alternative for so getting the I kids I can get them in a van, 7D van, a school bus van. I can go get them with a van. We can. Okay. okay. I just, because right. I know one See, of the, the mini, thoughts. See, the 7D, the vehicles that we have out yep. there, those those have the lights, have everything on them. So those I can go get okay. those kids in emergency with those vehicles. That, that was the question. We have three of them sitting out there. If, something, if that bus mm -hmm. does break down, okay. okay, technically, 
Probably an emergency situation on the activity yeah. bus, but I wouldn't even do that. Would go get them with the other one. Okay, yeah, that was because I know up. we Because that's what I just said. <coughs> we were looking at that short term to transport those yep. kids. Because we could do it for this year, but I don't think we'll be able to do it for next year. So we think we'd get two years anyways yep. if we're going down this road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's right. I just uh, wanted to know right. that that we was We can get the them. Continue. Those are legal buses out there. We okay. can pick up kids, <coughs> those drop kids off because they got the... Technically, when those vehicles are out there and not transporting kids, when a teach or uh, one of the teachers transports his kids to the museum or whatever, those f the the comes down comes down on the top. Yep. They have to come down. They're right. not a school bus then. Now they're now they're a regular activity vehicle. Okay. Just want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, it's you. you, you <laughs> they transport school kids, but it's an activity bus. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Um, Somebody would like to make a motion on the bid? I'll make a motion to accept the bids. Uh, both bids, you want to do them separately or? Together. To, together? Yeah. Uh, both together. bids for the two uh, separate vans, uh, buses uh, for the school committee, for the school district. Can I get a second? I'll second. Um, any discussion? Probably should clarify the price of the First one is fifty-three thousand four hundred ninety dollars, and the second one is fifty-three thousand four hundred ninety-five dollars for a total of one hundred six nine eighty-five. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nine ninety-five. Thank you. Yeah. Four ninety-five. Uh, I was reading off this, but it was off five dollars on the sheet. So Both. They're different. all different. <laughs> Should be fifty-three four four ninety and fifty-three four nine. 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 Okay. Okay. Um, now we'll move on to Dr. Shopper. No, and I only, I really only brought you one thing tonight because it's pretty lengthy, but I did want to bring it to you and I also did want to share it with the public. So, Cliff, I was going to ask if you can, is there any way you can point to that at the slides? You don't need to look at the slides because you have the draft plan in your packet, but I did want it to be visible <coughs> for the presentation. This is the draft. <coughs> excuse me, of the strategic plan that we've been working on through a committee over, the, over this whole year, really. We started by <coughs> meeting with the committee and developing a survey that went to the community. We had a very good response rate to that survey. Uh, the members of the committee reviewed the survey. Uh, the members of the committee also sponsored a Saturday morning charrette for our schools at which several people uh, came together to participate in a facilitated event with Rocky Blunt. Rocky Blunt has, this is the second strategic plan for West Boylston Public Schools that he has um, guided us through. And I'm, I'm <coughs> I'd like to present to you the results of that today. This is in draft form. And I would tell you that I hope we can have an extended conversation about this at the August meeting. Uh, just to, because this is the plan that truly all of our school and district improvement plans are going to be based off of this plan for the next five years. So if any of it rings poorly with you, we need to know now before we start in motion a plan that's going to take five years to complete. Um, you, I, I do want to thank the members of the Strategic Planning Committee um, in my district leadership team, Roger, Sherry, uh, Eric Bokankowitz, Chris Fournier, Rich Maha, Dave Lazat, and Melissa Wallace, and the members of the planning committee, Chris Fournier, Melissa Wallace, um, Jen Breen, Jason Ponticelli, Bill Gibbs from the West Boylston Teachers Association, um, Deb Goodwill, a health teacher in the district, Lisa Lawrence, a parent, Lori Rist, a parent, and Rocky Blunt. Uh, this committee put in many, many hours of work uh, to come together to have discussions and to vet ideas that were put forward. It, they were wonderful discussions, very fruitful, um, and I'm, I'm grateful to them for, for their participation. Um, we, one of the questions, a few of the questions actually that we asked on the survey were related to the district's mission, vision, and core values. Typically the components of a strategic plan are a mission, a vision, core values, um, a theory of action, and then a set of strategic objectives and strategic initiatives. We, we vetted the mission, vision, and core values that were previously in place through the uh, survey process, and nearly everybody responded, those are fine. So we didn't do anything to them. They stay as they were for the last strategic plan. Uh, the theory of action changed slightly, and I'd just like to uh, share that with you. Uh, we believe that if we provide an aligned curriculum that's tightly linked to the Massachusetts curriculum frameworks 
and infuse that curriculum with high quality personalized instruction aimed at improving student motivation and engagement in learning including the use of 21st century technology. Then the West Boston Public Schools will produce graduates who are ready to achieve in any college or career they choose. The then didn't change from the last time, just some of the, some of the points that we're aiming for have changed a little bit. We'd like to uh, work a little bit more on personalized instruction, work a little bit more at improving stu student motivation and engagement in learning. Uh, we feel like those are worthy targets for parts of this plan. So let me share with you, just in a, uh, a little extended way, the five uh, objectives that we want to work on and the plan for working on each one. Um, the first objective we want to work on is to ensure that our curriculum is tightly aligned to the curric Massachusetts curriculum frameworks while integrating the use of blended learning platforms and other 21st century technology innovations for instruction. As you know, we work on a seven-year curriculum revision cycle. We've been doing that since, for, you know, for many, many years. This time, every time we bring a new curriculum up for examination, for study, and to produce a new curriculum, not only are we <coughs> going to be producing just the standards that we're going to be working on and the objectives, we're also going to be thinking about how are we going to infuse technology into this curriculum to make it have a real tr true 21st century feel to it. We also want to begin to pilot in many grades some of the best things that are out there in the field. So next year, year one of this, we will be piloting the Summit Learning platform, which is a blended online and classroom-based learning platform in grade six English language arts. We just hired a English language arts teacher for this program who actually has experience with this program and she's excited to get started next week with Chris and um, Tom Pandicio is a consultant we're working with on this and they're going to meet together next week to get her set up. She does have experience with it so we're, we're hopeful. Um, it's one of those kind of um, learning platforms that is just really engaging for kids because it helps them track their own learning. Uh, the people who, who built the Facebook platform are the people who built this learning platform. So it's really engaging. It's really uh, targeted. And it uses uh, Google Classroom, which is a format that our kids are already uh, uh, familiar with, or, most, or they get familiar with it really fast once they get here. Uh, we're going to work on our producing our, uh, a new English language arts curriculum. We're going to do year one of that curriculum revision. Every one is two years long. We're in the second year of producing a health and PE curriculum. We're going to do year one of foreign language and year one of media tech, all that next year. The second year, we're going to evaluate our summit learning and see if we can get it into any other grades besides grade six or besides English. So we're going to just figure out what other platforms we might use. That year, we'll move on to our year one <coughs> mathematics curriculum review, be in year two for English, um, foreign language, and media technology, and then we'll start the arts curriculum. Uh, year three, we're going to adopt some 21st century learning platforms for the media, tech, foreign language, and English language arts curriculums, study and produce year two for math, and then science. It's kind of a rolling thing, so they don't, you know, we just, we just get a bite at the apple a few times every few years at each curriculum. In year four, we're going to be looking at adopting a 21st century learning platform for mathematics based on our, our year two curriculum work, which would be, have been completed. Um, in FY 2020, that's what we're talking about here, folks, that far away. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll be producing a, a science technology curriculum and social studies that year, year one and year two. Uh, and then we'd be looking to put the 21st century learning platforms into the science the following year uh, for the work that was completed in 2021, and we would be producing a social studies and a health curriculum. So we just, we just really keep this moving. We don't, we, we don't ever want to drop a curriculum and not talk about it, not reevaluate it, not give it some new flavor, new life. That's what this whole strand is all about. Our second, um, our second strategic objective is this, to promote instructional approaches that are personalized and responsive to the social and emotional needs of students in order to maximize motivation and achievement. One thing we heard loud and clear in almost every one of our formats that we had for parent um, feedback on this, parents in West Boylston want their children to love coming to school. They want it to be a nice experience for them. We need to do work to make sure that we're personalized enough so that that happens, so that uh, kids aren't, you know, feeling um, mad or sad about school and 
that they really love it here. And for the most part, they really do. <laughs> you know, it's, a, this is a, it's generally a great place. But we know we can always do better, and we know we can always find things that really click with kids. One of the, the, the lessons I think we learned this year was there is actually a possibility in every single subject and every single grade level of finding a certain way to have kids express their learning that brings them joy and brings the community joy. And we saw it mostly in the, the, when the fifth graders did their Met Wax Museum project. Those children wrote essays, of, of biographies of these people that they studied. They, they, um, they made portraits of them in art. They found costumes and memorized, um, memorized information about them that they could then say like they were a, ma a Wax Museum character. It was just a beautiful marriage of all the things you want. That kind of personalization and um, amount of student effort, that's what we're trying to capture with this. So it might not come out in that way in the standards that we write out because they're a little bit lame <laughs> as far as I'm not, they're not really, they're written, as, they're written as things to do, tasks to do. But we really want to give it that life and that flavor. So for this standard, we're going to begin next year by figuring out what we already do well with personalization. What are the things that we want to make concrete? These are things that have to happen here every year because they are so good for kids, and kids love them and look forward to them. I know the Wax Museum will be on that list. We're also going to try to offer staff some workshops on how to work, with, work to meet the social and emotional needs of students. We just booked a speaker for next March 3rd. Uh, who's going to come and work with us for a half a day. Very well respected um, speaker from the, uh, in the field. Her name is Jessica Minahan. So we're excited to do that in year one. In year two of this, for this standard, um, <clears throat> we're going to try to publish and um, describe very well the things that we do that we want kids to keep doing in each, in each classroom. So if we have something like the Wax Museum, how do we capture a picture of that, a description of that, a learning plan for that, so that it wouldn't matter whether hands changed here, personnel changed, we would keep doing that for kids. We want to have a nice record of everything so that we make sure things are perpetual here. Um, we're going to ask um, teachers to step up as leaders. Uh, to, to provide some training and inspiration for their colleagues, people who do this really well already, and try to bring everybody else along. In year three, we're going to set a goal. We're going we're to have a recommendation or a requirement, actually, that all teachers begin to develop a goal that includes instructional approach, approaches that maximize personalization and that meet the social and emotional learning needs of students. We're going to do that goal setting through a couple years of the teacher process. So we're going to do that in year three, four, and five. And by then, we will have we will have every teacher have done this at least once, and some of them will have done this twice to write goals to reach to help personalize things and meet the emotional needs of students. Um, there's always this is something I don't want to get too narrow in the in the ways that we do it because I think we can be very creative with it and really bring give it give it some life and some energy. Um, but to keep it on the radar is going to keep us talking about it, keep us talking to teachers about it. Uh, that's the point of that, because I have to tell you, the, the message was clear. It was the number one thing in the charrette. Um, we want our kids to like coming to school. The number one thing out of five things. I, they, they had 40 to choose from, and that was the number, that's the one that came out number one at the end of the day. It was kind of amazing to me. Um, not that I don't think people would want that, but I, I was surprised it, it, got a, it got a ranking above some other things. Um, our third goal is to hire, retain, and continually develop high-quality staff members. Uh, we want to, um, in year one, we want to make sure we have uh, put the bones, made all uh, the notes about our, our um, new teacher induction program and mentoring program. We're going to, we have been training and we will continue to train teachers to be leaders in the teacher induction program. And we will continue to offer those, the workshops that we do for that. In year one, we will also be partnering with Assumption College through that grant that we got the EPIC partnership grant to um, you know, help us work on staffing and help us work on developing new teachers. We are going to train a teacher at uh, Major Edwards School to be a Wilson Foundation's teacher facilitator. Uh, that person will help us to bring a really strong phonics program to the early elementary grades. A and then. Um, the other piece that we'd like to, to continue to develop high quality staff is to give our administrators the chance to gain uh, additional experiences um, doing things that are the district management pieces. 
you know, we don't have a, as you know, we don't have any redundancy here for Sherry, Roger, and I. If one of us is out, the others have to kind of pick up the ball. We'd like to share the wealth a little bit and train, uh, just, just kind of have some cross-training between everybody who's an administrator in the district who's capable of, you know, uh, formulating reports and uh, being, you know, a voice for the district on reports that have to go to the Department of Education or the federal government. It's important that a lot of more people have those skills. Um, in year two, we'll, we'll be working on the third year of our teacher induction program. That's our year C workshops, we call them. We'll train some teachers to deliver those, then we will deliver those. We'll continue working with um, Assumption College. We're going to provide uh, just words facilitation to all special education teachers in grades 4 through 12. This is a special education program that's meant to catch kids who don't have perfect literacy skills when they leave third grade and make sure that we have teachers who can help them bridge those gaps. And um, we feel like this has been a missing piece in our our repertoire that we haven't all used the same kind of a strategy for literacy and we feel like if we do that for the special needs kids we'll see some um, a little bit more um, tight results we in this one I have to tell you we're looking these these things that are about the just words training and the foundations training are about helping us close the gap so that we can become a level one school uh, you're labeled as a level two school if there's a wide uh, a w too wide a gap between the achievement of your regular education kids and the achievement of your high needs groups including special education we're trying to close that gap we're trying to get our level one designation we feel like this work will help us to achieve that um, I, in year two of this hiring and continually uh, developing staff we want to continue doing some work with our administrators too, giving them additional opportunities um, Year three, we're doing the same kinds of things over again. It's just different, different pieces of it. We'd be doing the year A teacher training for the new teacher induction program. We would offer another training for new mentor teachers. We only do that about once every five years because you, you don't, we don't have a need for as, that many mentors that we would do this every year. Uh, we're going to provide Wilson level one training to selected special education teachers, at least one per grade, elementary, <coughs> middle, and high school. Um, we want that completed by year three. We're actually starting to do some of that right now, and we're going to continue to expand the opportunities for administrators. Uh, year four, uh, we're going to have to, we'll continue the new teacher induction program. We'll also have to train people in our literacy instruction practices. If we have any new staff, we'll have to continue to train them and continue to work with the administrators to gain some competencies in the district level work. Um, and year five is just, it's just more of the same. It's just kind of a cycle of it. So we'd be back to year C of the new teacher induction program and giving the teachers um, specialized literacy instruction training. Um, I, I don't have on this list some of the things that we already do and we know we do well. For example, bringing teachers in to do demo lessons and stuff. That's the kind of stuff you might see on a list like this if you didn't already do it so regularly. But right now, I think we do it with such regularity that we, it's, not a, it's not a goal or anything for us anymore. It's not a, we don't need to have it on a plan for a new initiative, because it's not a new initiative. It's just it's r routine practice for us. So these things are just things that are other things that we haven't been doing that we could do or firm up. Our fourth of five strategic objectives is to develop and enact a communication plan that focuses on homeschool partnerships for student success and achievement. Um, we feel like communication is a very broad term that gets, that gets thrown around and uh, we're always hearing about the need to communicate more, to communicate better. We really try to focus where we want to improve our communication and we feel like the best bang for the buck for our school communication is to communicate with parents and mostly to communicate with parents about things that are going to help them help their children succeed academically. So we're going to develop over the course of five years several parent workshops, parent communication um, programs and uh, videotapes of workshops that we do that <coughs> will be online <coughs> for parent access to show them how the things that they can see online can help them help their children. For example, we have our student management system called School Brains. Not every parent uses that yet. Not every parent even maybe doesn't even know how to get onto it. We want to get in year one, we want to get every parent or most parents into a student uh, School Brains workshop. 
We want to run a workshop for all the sixth grade parents whose kids are going to be using Summit Learning. We want to help parents um, over the course of three years, we want to help parents uh, learn to use the Naviance system, which is what the guidance counselors use uh, to, get, to help kids get ready for college and to give them a, a holding place for all of their college information. Um, We'd like to run a workshop for parents on Google, Google Classroom. How do you use Google Classroom? What are your kids using Google Classroom for? How does that work? How is my kid talking to another kid and co collaborating on a, on a paper that they're writing tonight? How, do, how, do they, how are they doing that? Parents may not even know. We do want them to know. Um, we'd also like, uh, that's about it. I th so those are the ones we really want to run over the next five years. So we've got a plan here each year to kind of introduce one or two of these and try to bring parents on board. Yep. I would say one thing on school brains. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Need to teach the teachers, teachers to, to put it. their information in because yeah. that is not being done no. as effectively as it should be. I know it's a it's it, a bargaining it's a, it's, it's a bargaining issue. Is it a bargaining? It's a working condition. Well, I'm just saying. It's, yeah. It, you go in there and you. I know. Some There's teachers no don't brains. do it at all. Some I know. teachers do it perfectly. I know. So it's an issue. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Sorry. It is. I, I, I agree with you. I it's completely agree. It's good to teach agree. the parents, but we got to teach well, the teachers, I, too. I, just I, I completely agree. That if we're going to give the message to the parents that that's where they need to go and they need to get trained to use it, yeah. we can't ask them to do that if the grades aren't there. Yeah. I, I just, or the assignments or, or whatever, assignments. whatever it is, you know, because yeah. that's yeah. what I go looking on, and I, I half the classes are not. I know. I know. Yeah, and we'll work on the other piece too. But it is it is contractual. Um, asking teachers to, to, to it is. It's just I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. Uh, we can we can bargain that. We can say these are the rules that we want teachers here. But usually that's a negotiation about. Well, it's, it's, it's an impact bargain. It's right? impact bargain. Yeah, it's yeah, not, yeah. Well, this no. Is how you do in it. some in some places it's in the contract that I, I can. Uh, many districts around here who have school brains or similar pro similar programs have something that says teachers have to update it this often. Either it's you know once every month, once every twice a semester. A lot of them say just twice a semester. And our teachers do update theirs twice a semester because we give a progress report. So we know they're in there at least twice a semester. Um, but they can give a progress report and I can still go in there and see no grades. But this, this is yeah. how we make progress reports so this is what yeah. you have to do yes so yes how do you do that yeah. and we're more than happy to talk to you about what yeah. the impact to your collective bargaining agreement is but yeah. this is what you're gonna do yeah well and I, I I mean I have to say we do try we do have a lot of teachers who do use it very well I mean I think there are some who don't who are more old-fashioned they use a grade book right now all it says in our in our policies is that they have to keep grades it doesn't actually say that they have to put them in a particular yeah it, it doesn't the have most to important though. piece I mean, of this is for the parents, parents to help the yeah. kids yeah. to be successful, yeah. we need to be able to see that they're missing assignments. We I need agree. to know, hey, you know, I, agree. I don't want I have, to email yeah. a teacher and say, how many assignments is missing? This, that's a frustration that mm -hmm. I yeah. should be able to go look in here and say, Bing, yeah. my son missed an assignment and I don't want him to be hurt by that if right. he's not successful at getting that done so hopefully or, or this or so hopefully this so. this plan will help us raise all of that and and get to a good uh, get to a better place I than we're it in take five years no I, we have school brains on the very first <laughs> year I'm so kidding, that's our kidding, first kidding, no that was our first kidding, year because it's our you know that's our highest level mm -hmm. um, because not only does school brains hold your ch your child's grades, it has information about their attendance. Assignment, it, it, it's 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 how you give us information about where you live and what your phone number is and what your new email is. So there's other things besides just grade functions that are part of why we use school brains, um, that are you know other other kinds of information. But I, I agree with you. I mean I think this may this may help all of us get on a better page. It may help open up a better dialogue about how what should be available so that we can know to tell teachers this is what needs to be available. I know Chris tries to do it. I know Rich tries to do it in his fourth and fifth grade. But it's all, we're, we're actually on a, still on a bit of a learning curve with this. This, is not, this has not been with people for a long, long time. It's relatively new technology for them. It's, we, we've, we haven't even had it the whole time I've been here. When I got here, we had Reddick or software. So uh, you know, I think we got school brains when I was a couple years in. So it's, you know, it's three or four years old. It's not, it hasn't been long-term use so the issue yeah, is is change yes oh definitely the issue people don't want to change well, yeah it really is it's not just that though I think the bigger issue is that if the message is to parents 
we use school brains, parents go to school brains. So if you're conditioning the parents to use it, then the reason that they're going there needs to exist. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I was told that I could get assignments and grades off of school brains. Yeah. If it's not going to be there, I shouldn't be told yeah. that. So that's that's the argument I would make. So there's been a shift yeah. in, in the philosophy for teachers. From right. These, this is my grade book, these are my assignments, right. and I come up with the grade and you'll get the grade <laughs> on report card time. We've made a huge shift. The teachers that are coming in and let's say, I just finished my second year, and in that time we've probably hired anywhere from 14 to 16 new teachers. That's part of the new teacher training for all 14 and 16 of those people. So they come in with the understanding that we're transparent about assignments and about grades. So in two years, it's 14 people who do that regularly. And that's part of what we are telling our staff on, a, on a, an annual basis is that this community has bought in to transparent communication about student achievement. And the expectation now is that parents are savvy, kids are savvy. Kids have their own school grades accounts, parents have their own accounts. It helps children to be able to log in and see how they're doing and get a snapshot for each subject and for parents to see, you know, where the gaps are or where the missing assignments are. And this this goes above and beyond emails. This is like an instant opportunity to have a conversation with your child. So that's part of what we're trying to establish here. And we're trying to embed in the training for the teachers. And for some folks, you know, this is new. And for the folks that we're bringing on board, that's the expectation. So I think it's going to be so much quicker than five years before Every teacher is putting their information in as soon as it's available because they want the support from home. Because it's well, that's, I think that's the key. key. That's the key. You get the support from home, you're going to have better results. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's you, you'll know that the students are getting that the students that are getting support from home are your best students. Typically. Of, of of note, though, right? So, I mean, this is this is a committee-based document. This has been yeah. put together by the committee, a member of who, of which is a representative of the teachers' association. So, this isn't something that's being foisted on folks, right? So, no, they were on board for presumably this. Presumably, that's no, they were on board for all right. the training. They were on board to help with these presentations. They offered themselves to run presentations and workshops for parents. So, I think we do have um, buy-in. But they're, they're individual members not speaking for their whole group. And I mean, we, we do have work to do here. That, that's why we have a plan, by the way. That's why yeah. it's, you know, it's strategic plan. It's not just going to happen with the snap of a finger. It's, it's stuff we're going to have to work at. And I mean, we'll, we'll I, I er, actually really appreciate the feedback on this, though, because I think now as we structure a set of goals and specific objectives for this, for the school improvement plan for next year, I'll have that in mind that we don't we may not have good compliance across the board from every teacher with getting their grades into the uh, into the um, platform in a timely way or in a way that's really helpful to parents so we'll, we'll we'll make sure we give that feedback to them and make sure they know that we are setting you know maybe a little bit higher bar for them around this so that we we can not only help parents help their kids but we can actually be legitimate in in using our product in a way that's going to be very helpful um, and and then then as, as more and more people do it, the the stragglers will stand out, right? That gets a little bit easier to work with. So, I think we do have to know who who people I, are. I can see using. that they would see this as a, another responsibility yeah. that I have to do. Yeah. Because I'm used to putting it in here. Right. Now well, they still I, may be putting it in there. Yeah, but they're putting it in here, and it's then they're putting, yeah. they have to take it yeah. from here and put it in there. Yeah. Really I can see that extra it's, step. It's not but really an extra step. No. They just moved. I know. <laughs> they just moved to the technology. Yeah. It's, it's, right. that's, we'll, we'll get them there. Don't worry. We're going to get them there. We're going to get everybody there. We're, you know, we're raising the boats. That's what this should do. This should help us yeah. raise the boats yeah. a little bit. So I'm grateful for the feedback. Thank you. And I didn't think that was the one you guys were going to want to talk about the most. I thought maybe number five would be, because number five is pro probably in my estimation um, the one that's going to require us to do the most work um, and that is the uh, number five is to determine uh, and this was loud and clear from everybody in every venue over and over again uh, especially the comment section on our survey was nothing but this um, the community really would like us to determine if there are any options for improvement repair or replacement of school facilities so, you know, there's a lot of ways you can go about this, and we're going to go about it the, a very methodical um, and 
and gentle way, I would say. So we have a first year set of goals, and a lot of this is going to fall to the school committee and the school building committee. Uh, the, we're going to have to, in year one, focus the work of the school committee's building subcommittee on the questions of repair or replacement of school facilities. Uh, we, in year one, we're going to need to hold some initial meetings with key stakeholders, including the town administrator, the FIS board, capital planning board, to determine documentation that will be needed to begin the process of repair or replacement within the next decade. And we will have to, 100% have to, develop and submit a statement of interest to the Massachusetts School Building Authority. That's a yearly requirement if you're, if you're wanting to look for any kind of building help from the state. In year two, um, I believe that these would be the steps we would do. I, obviously, we'll, we'll, these seem to make sense to me. We would analyze our community demographic data, prepare a long-range enrollment forecast, conduct surveys of existing buildings, and review the district's education programs, calculating school capacities in relation to the planned educational program. Uh, we would continue to communicate with appropriate <coughs> town boards and personnel to advance planning efforts and decision making and maintain an active statement of interest at the Massachusetts School Building Authority. As we get into year three, uh, the focus would change a little bit. Uh, we would still need to keep our a statement of interest active at the Mass MSBA. We would generate a problem statement and provide options as alternative solutions to the problem. So we would figure out what's going on in the buildings and start to lay out some different options. Hold community meetings to receive input and feedback regarding the problem statement of, around the buildings and the development or replacement or repair of buildings. Um, and we would start the community dialogue about the various options that are developed. We would also release the reports of any studies to appropriate boards or committees. So we're probably working with a consultant by year two or three to do some of that work. In year four, we would work with town boards and committees to determine next steps, maintain the statement of interest with MSBA, and prepare documents and presentations as requested by the school committee or other town boards um, as, you know, as the, as things get, progress gets made here. And you never know where you're really going to be in year four. I mean, are you going to be at the place where you're going to have a plan, or are you going to be at a place where you're still kind of vetting plans, uh, still kind of taking the temperature of the community, you know, what's going on there? You never know. Um, in year five, continue to work with town boards and committees to determine what the next steps are, maintain an active statement of interest with the MSBA, and prepare documents and presentations as requested by the school committee and or other town boards. I don't think you'll have a new school by year five, but I think if there is a possibility of having one, you might have a vision for it or a plan or have some, some momentum going. Um, my hope would be that you'd have something new or improved or significantly improved within the next decade if you start on this journey next year. That's the plan. <laughs> I don't want to drop the fact that we need to continue to improve this building while we're studying this. Of course, yes. Such as the, the you know, the various things that are on the list yeah. of the capital yeah. list. We yeah. need to continue to chip away at that even though we may have this theory yes. of mm -hmm. building a new school and yes. we've always talked about Major Ed, which is probably first in line. We're probably second in line up here at the high school level. Yeah. Um, at least the discussions have always been that way. I thought last year we budgeted a certain amount of money to have a study done. That was just going to be a, a demographic study, but I don't think we should do it until we get the new, the t until the new housing is Not built. Not this year. I thought it was last year. It was year. last it was like year. 3,200. But we didn't know how many people would be coming in in the new development yeah. that's yeah, being that's made. Right. And I think we have to wait for that to settle a little bit and get those mm -hmm. numbers. I don't, we would have been throwing our money away to do that at that point because it wouldn't, it no, wasn't going to be the same it. town. Yeah. But I, I'm, I'm just concerned about yeah. continuously improving yeah. the facilities. Yeah, we won't drop, we don't drop want the ball mixture. there. You know, yeah. we want these yeah. facilities to be the best they can be yeah. with what we have. Yes, I agree. Okay. So that's the plan. Um, I hope we can have an extended discussion and maybe, you know, we'll also be bringing you in, in August uh, 
maybe, probably, some proposals for how year one would flesh out in each of these categories. So you can see some actual, this is the thing we'd like to get done, and this is the timeline for doing it. We write those, as you know, as SMART goals. So you can see exactly, like, by a certain date, this is what we will do. Um, and we'll try to do that for year one, so you can get a sense of what that would look like in year one. And, and you know, most of them play out kind of similarly, so you'd probably be able to guess what they would look like in year two, three, four, and five. Correct. I think these are going to be challenging. I mean, you've added a lot of challenging yeah. goals onto the normal day-to-day -day operations of having a successful school system. So last time it was four goals. Yeah. This time I felt really comfortable with the five. I feel like it gives us a great roadmap and we can handle it. We are a very well-functioning team. We've been working together for a while now. And <laughs> I, think, I think we didn't bite off more than we can chew. I think we can handle this. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? Sorry. That's it. Okay. Uh, that brings us to school committee reports. No. Start with Mr. No. Um, I just have two things to say real quick. I was uh, honored to have attended the graduation on June 2nd, and uh, I found it absolutely a, it was a beautiful ceremony. It was extremely personalized. Um, and I think, you know, the more I kind of reflected on it, uh, that graduation was a, a, a perfect culmination of a West Boylston public school <laughs> education. You know, and it... It was so personalized, every, absolutely every student, I believe there were 60 of them, were honored. And it's really what it felt like. You know, they were given the time, and um, whether it be Mr. Fournier, uh, Mr. Pedoni, um, and the class officers, you know, the way they spoke, um, and, and the fact that each student, their, their future plans were, you know, were, were reported to the, to the crowd and um, the cameras, and it was, you know, Students don't fall through the cracks here, and that was completely evident right there in that graduation ceremony. Mm -hmm. you know, nobody, nobody in the crowd was sitting there with um, gloss over eyes, you know, as it went through. It was, it was, it was fantastic. So I, I cannot wait to, live, to attend it again next year, and that leads to my second uh, statement. I'd like to thank the citizens of West Boylston uh, for giving me the opportunity to continue to serve on this board, um, and I'll be able to do so for at least one other year. So thank you very much. Thank you. I would echo uh, in the respect to thank you for the citizens of West Boylston for re-electing me for another three-year term. Um, uh, I'm honored to be on the board. I, I, I'm going to work as hard as I did in the first year I was here. Um, and I can assure you that these last three years will be my last three years. <laughs> years? I will end after 12 years. Well, I was going to say, this oh, is year good. going into year 10 for you. Yes. So, oh, um, but I'm honored to be on the board, and I'm going to work as hard as I can for the school committee, uh, the schools, as I've done even in day one. So, thank you. I also like to, of course, I have to bring something up with Rotary. Uh, we, we awarded, we are about to award three scholarships uh, again this year, 2,000 each. Um, and one is to uh, one of our students here at West Boston, Diane Peterson, uh, and then two others were awarded to Wachusett students, and though this student doesn't go to this school, I have to say her name, uh, Riley Fournier. Uh, oh, yes. Mr. Fournier's daughter won one of the awards. So we are awarding that on Friday morning. And so we'll, if you're interested to come to that meeting, it's 7.30 in the morning, uh, and uh, we'll be awarding those scholarships. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Morris. Um, you know, I just want to say what a great year. Uh, just, just watching the, the evolution of the administrative staff here at the, at the high school uh, come together at the Haiti trip and, and, and just, um, you know, just the this was my first year having a student here in this building and um, just watching him grow over the course of his sixth grade uh, experience. So I'm looking forward to um, watching him grow for the next six years here. Um, and uh, to, to echo what was said by my colleagues, I appreciate the opportunity now to, to sit with the board now for another three years. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to, to speaking with the eighth grade students mm -hmm. uh, next week. So um, it's been a great year, and I appreciate it. Pardon? That's this week. That's this week? That's not this week. It's next week, right? It's Monday. Oh, it is Monday. Yeah. It's Friday. Don't, <laughs> don't mess me up. 
I, I, I have a tenuous grasp of my calendar as it is. So. <laughs> <laughs> so. I'm on. Okay. Um, we do have one order of businesses to set in August school committee retreat date. Did you get I did. results from everybody? Or? No, not everybody. Okay. We gave a doodle survey. And I, uh, it was, the, the choices were August 21st, which is a Monday, or August 22nd, which is a Tuesday. Three voted for August 22nd. Two voted for August 21st. I'm That's probably going to go with the 21st. <laughs> oh, no, they, they voted for both if they could. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, either one is fine. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't respond, so... Um Either a Monday or a Tuesday. I prefer Tuesday because Monday is usually a crazy day. That's August 22nd. But that would that would be four people that would have said they could go on August 22nd then. Was there one that could not? Uh, yeah, somebody. I just I, some, I, no, I think no I you picked both. both. Yeah, somebody said they couldn't go on August 21st. I couldn't do the 21st. That was Jason, yeah. Oh, okay. So the 22nd is fine. Yeah, okay, 22nd. Thank you very much. Okay. Could so you please send us an email? I will. Reply yes, so I, I will. My system I will yes, I will. And I'll, I'll send you a, a draft of an agenda, too, so you can hold on to that for that day. Uh, you, sh you, you should vote on that just to set the date, because we don't have that here. That's a meeting that's held off site, so um, we'll probably hold it at, from 9 to, the to 3. 22nd retreat. Yep. Second. All in favor? No. Oh, second? Second. Oh, uh, second. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. There's that tenuous grasp for my calendar. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, I don't have any additional updates. Uh, with that, I can take a motion to adjourn. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.